everybody. So yes, my wife is expecting. Um, if this phone rings, I'm out of here. Okay. So um, thank you all. Uh, thank you everybody for for coming. Thank you everybody for coming to my talk. Uh, and thank you, Sam, for giving a great talk before on AngularJS migration, a topic, a favorite topic of mine. But while you're busy trying to figure out how to replace your AngularJS applications with Angular, machines are trying to figure out how to replace you. So uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk today about a few things. And in fact, I'm going to talk today about one specific way in which I think machines are going to come and replace you as web developers. But um, This machine obviously isn't going to, so let's do it this way. OK. So thank you very much for the intro. My name's Asif Hussain. You can find me on Twitter as Jawache, not Jawache, Jawache. I blog about Angular and JavaScript on my website, codecraft.tv. And I'm what's called a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. Yes. So we're a small team inside Microsoft. If you saw John earlier on today, he's actually my manager. Um, so we're a small team inside Microsoft. We are the open source developer advocates. Um, if you go to this link here, you can find all of us. We cover a large, different, a, a large, different, a large range of different technologies. My speciality is JavaScript. Um, I'm also an instructor on Udemy. Does anybody know Udemy here? Any any of you, my students? One hand. Ah, oh, there we go. Two hands. So um, I'm also an instructor on Udemy. And uh, last year, they added in automatic subtitling. So uh, for the first time, they correctly transcribed my name to Awesome. So my name's Awesome, or Rawsome, is maybe another term. Um, and this is probably another way to describe me as well. So um, this is kind of me in the last year, uh, obviously, Angular guy through and through. Um, I've really got into machine learning. This is actually my friend Eleanor's slide, because Eleanor and I are very much into um, AI machine learning. And earlier on this year, uh, we were going for a hike. And there were a bunch of different JavaScript technologies that were doing machine learning. We said, you know what, let's, let's create a meetup group to start talking about this. And that's exactly what we did, actually. So we created AI JavaScript London. If you want to go to it, we're, there's the link there. Um, we're very, very fast-growing meetup group. We've only been running about six months now, and we've now reached uh, 850 people. Um, we run about one or two meetups a month, um, and we run a mixture of workshop meetups and talk meetups. And in fact, we've got a meetup coming on the 30th of November, which is going to be a workshop meetup where we teach you how to do uh, machine learning in JavaScript. And you're going to build, learn how to build something that recognizes handwriting. So go join. And well, another thing Eleanor and I did, because we did the meetup, a lot of people started sending us little demos of little JavaScript, AI-powered JavaScript demos. So we said, well, why don't we put it online somewhere? And that's exactly what we did. And we created a website called AIJS Rocks. And if you go to this website, what you find is a number of different demos, the kind of AI-powered JavaScript apps. You're going to find at least a link so you can click on the application and try it out on the internet. But you can also find, uh, you also find kind of links to the source code or links to how it was actually built. The, the, the purpose of the site is to both inspire and to teach, to so inspire you with a couple of demos. And if you like a demo, you can click it, play around the code, and figure out how it works. And that's actually going to be the, 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 how I'm going to talk through AI today. I'm going to take three of the demos on AI.js Rocks. I'm going to explain how, the, how it works. I'm going to talk about a little bit how to actually build that type of application today. Right. First one. The Mojifier. It's not trademarked. It's just, you know, the Mojifier. So, <laughs> made sense. Um, so the Mojifier, it's going to change the world. Yeah. What it does, it can take any image, detect the face in the image. Any guesses? Emoji. 
there's always one person that says it emojifies it. And that's great. What it does is it detects the face in the image, detects the emotion in the face, the emotion, and then finds the appropriate emoji and places the image in the face. So I released this several times. It's, made, it's, it's had many different incarnations. The latest incarnation is as a Slack bot. So if you go into Slack, you can grab any image, um, and you can do slash emojify with the image. And it emojifies it. Obviously, you can take different images. Uh, we've obviously got a very famous person here, one of my leaders of the world. And if I finally answer the question, and there you go. <laughs> so I'm going to show you, I'll, I'll, I'll skip, skip this now. I'm going to show you at the end how to actually build your own Modify. And there's going to be a link so you can actually download and, and add the Modify to your own Slack workspace if you wanted to. But I think there's some really interesting parts about the Mojify to talk about. And I think the most interesting part about the Mojify is to figure out how um, it calculates emotion. Right? How do you actually do that? OK? And it's, I'm going to tell you, it's actually pretty, pretty easy. It's much, much easier than you think. Much, much easier than you think. The first thing you need to do to calculate emotion is to detect the different parts of the face. OK? Where are the eyes? Where are the ears? Where is the nose? Where's the chin, OK? And there's quite a few different libraries out there which you can use that kind of help you detect the features of a face. JavaScript, libraries you can run inside JavaScript. That's step one. And the second step is really, really easy. The second step is just use an artificial neural network. We good? Yeah? Do anybody want me to explain a neural network? OK, whatever. I'll, I'll explain it. I'll explain it for you. So now, what is an artificial neural network? So it's actually based, it's got a basis in biology, which is neurons. This is actually a neuron. Believe it or not, your, your brains are hopefully full of these. Um, what it has, it has some dendrites, a body, and some axons. The dendrites are kind of the cables going in. If enough electricity fires in the dendrites, the body goes, OK, cool. I'm going to fire some electricity out the axons. And that's it. That's a neuron. If you stick enough of these together, I actually don't know how many you need for a brain. 400 million, I don't know, billion, um, one. Uh, you, it, it creates a human being, creates a brain. Okay? I personally think there's a little bit more involved to consciousness, but it does create a very, very intelligent thinking uh, person. And in fact, what you can do is you can turn this, you can program this, well, you can program this programmatically. So you have to turn this into a computer program. So if you imagine trying to build up a neuron using jobs, using some code, you'd probably have something like uh, some edges going into a node and some edges going out. Okay. Then imagine you start feeding something into this neuron. Maybe what this is is uh, house price increases in London, uh, percentage of coffee shops opened up in the area in the last year, which actually has been a study done in the past. It's proportional, believe it or not. Um, and so then what you do you, in, in this neural network, you, you, those are the inputs that come in. And then for each of these edges, you would create a random number associated with it. These are the weights. And you, you randomize the weights to the random number. And then you multiply this all together, add it up. It goes to an activation function. right? And whatever this activation function pumps out, you pump it out the other end. That's it. That's all you need to do. You can imagine coding this up in Java, it probably wouldn't take you too long. To actually like flesh this out a little bit more, this is what happens. This is what happens. This is the mathematics that's involved in building a neural network. You have some numbers coming in. You multiply them by the weights. You sum them together. Activation function, whatever it pumps out, you go to the end. There's lots of different types of activation functions out there. This is a really, really simple threshold function. So if a number is below 0, it's 0. If a number is above 0, it's 1. That's what you saw just now. There's lots of different ones out there. But essentially, you just, you just connect a bunch of those together. This is a neural network. It's just a bunch of those neurons connected together. This is an input layer, two hidden layers, one output layer. That's it. So let's go back to the example of kind of, um, sorry, and then what you do is you basically randomize all of these edges with different weights. That's all you're doing, randomizing it with different weights. So then what you do is you basically maybe pump in the input layer. Maybe you're pumping in the positions of the different parts of the face. You can imagine with a smile, you probably expect these to be up, 
with a throw and you probably would have got it to be down. So you can imagine you kind of maybe maybe there's a way of pumping in positions of a face, positions of features of a face. Then it's just going to do that multiplication that I showed you, it's just going to do that multiplication through and output a number. Maybe zero means unhappy, 10 means happy. I'm obviously very happy with this input picture. So I know that the real number should be eight. I know it should be eight, okay? I know it's off by five. Because of that, what, I, what you can do is you need, to re, you need to change these weights, right? If you change the weights so that when you pump in the numbers again, it gives you eight. That's the goal. That's the training that you do with a neural network. And how you do that is using something called back propagation, which I'm not going to go into because it actually involves a lot of maths, okay? But that's basically what happens is it, is it, re, it all, when you're training a neural network, it's then going to tune those weights. That's all a neural network is. It's just weights that are getting tuned and changed. So when you pump in some numbers at the start, you get the number you expect at the end. Oops. And that's it. So that's what I might do. I might take a, a data set out there with a, a label data set of here's a picture, it's happy. Here's a picture, it's sad. You feed it in, you train a neural network, and then you give it a new picture of a face or the features of a face, and it will then tell you whether that face is happy or sad. Exactly. Right? You could do that. It's a lot of hard work. So what I do with Emojify is I use an API. Oh. That's bad timing. I use an API, OK? There's lots of different APIs out there, especially with face detection. Google's got one. Microsoft's got one. I think Amazon's got one. This is the one I use, the Azure Cognitive Services Face API. It's really, really simple in order to use. You just basically post it an image and a path to an image to some API endpoint. And it returns you a little bit of JSON. So it's going to return you an array of these objects. So for each face in the image, it's going to return you the position of the rectangle, which is important when you want to place an emoji on a face and to know where to put it. And it's also going to give you an, an object which tells you how the anger, contempt, disgust, fear, happiness, neutral, sadness, and surprise of a face. A little bit of a fact, if you have a beard, you cannot be 100% happy. I've tried. It's impossible. Okay. So that's it, just to summarize. What I want you to take away from this little part of the talk is that neural networks, they're, really, they're incredibly powerful. A large part of what you've been hearing about and the breakthroughs in this space in the past couple of years is with deep learning and, and neural networks. Okay? But the other thing I want you to understand is that conceptually, they're actually quite simple to understand. Like I kind of explained to you very, very high level, explained to you the basics in like five minutes. Okay? So don't need to be afraid of it. And I think that's some of the things I, I have when I'm speaking to JavaScript developers and trying to get into AI. There's a lot of fear. It's okay. It is approachable, OK? Next one. This title is going to need some explanation. But before that, I'm going to need a drink. I have a speaking coach. She encourages me to play around with silence, which I just did. Um, so uh, TensorFlow, MobileNet, and I'm fine. Now, this is a, I give a, I do work, as I mentioned, I do workshops uh, for, uh, in, our, in, our, in our meetup in, in London. I did a workshop about three, four months ago where I was wearing a T-shirt that said, um, Azure puppies and I'm fine. Long story. So one of, the, one of the attendees of this meetup actually went away and built an application based off what we taught them called TensorFlow, MobileNet, and I'm fine. His name's Oliver Turner. He's a really good guy. I don't know if he's here today, actually. But this is it. This is the application itself. It's just the code pen. It's very, very simple. And uh, what it is, is you can basically, it does a this is doing a search when you click it to unsplash, getting an image. And then it's trying to guess what's in the image. This is a fur coat. It's going to click I'm fine now. Is it? Yes. And that's, it's guessed that that's a, Platypus, duck-billed platypus, a paddle boat. Okay, maybe not that good. This is fountain. Hmm. 
puppies. It has got a terrier at the bottom. It's got almost there. And let's give it one more go. Okay, so it's not that good. Okay, it's not that good. But I think the important thing to take away from this is, is that the, the only API call that's getting called here is the API to Unsplash to get the image itself. The actual detection of what's in the image is happening locally in JavaScript in the browser on the client side. Right? Now, it's using a technology called TensorFlow. Has anybody heard of TensorFlow? Fantastic. So TensorFlow is like the, the standard way of building uh, neural networks these days. One, one, well, it's not the standard way. It's one of the most popular ways of building neural, neural networks these days. Um, but TensorFlow is normally you have to kind of install it. It's written in C. You have to run it on, a, on, on your computer. Well, very recently, about five, six months ago maybe now, they released TensorFlow.js. OK, there you go. So the, I think the important thing to understand, about, the important takeaway about TensorFlow.js, and something that I realized only after working with it for a little bit, was I initially thought that TensorFlow.js was bindings to TensorFlow. And I thought you had to install TensorFlow in order to use TensorFlow.js. And it's not. TensorFlow.js is a complete rewrite of TensorFlow in JavaScript. Why is that important? It's important because of this. right? Now, in order to do TensorFlow, in order to, to do machine learning, all you have to do is have one import, OK? If you're a proper developer. If you're like me, we use script tags, OK? But that's the important takeaway, is that that's all you need to do in order to do machine learning in JavaScript. You can do a couple of different things with TensorFlow.js. You can train models. So you can do what I explained to you earlier on, where you define a neural network, and it's doing the training and tuning the numbers and building something and tuning the, 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 right, uh, the, the right weights. Or you can load pre-trained models. So you have models that are built somewhere else, even not even using TensorFlow.js, using other frameworks. You can export them and convert them into a format which you can load with TensorFlow.js. Okay? And that's actually what, what the uh, that's actually the framework that uh, Oliver used to build that demo application. They're using something called MobileNet, which is just uh, an image recognition uh, neural network that's been converted to be able to run in the browser. Um, you can basically go do TF load model, pass in a JSON file, and uh, load MobileNet. And then, but you can also just import it from a package there. And that's all you need to do. Load it, and then pass it an image to classify. And it's going to give you the predictions of what's in the image. It's doing that on the client side in JavaScript. Pretty cool. You can do that, right? Or you could use the various APIs, right? So there's the Azure API here. Um, it's called the Computer Vision API. The mobile net does an OK job. It's obviously not doing a great job. It was saying duckball platypus for a couple of things, right? Um, MobileNet is less used for actually recognizing things in an image. It's used, more used for something else called transfer learning, which I won't, don't have time to go into today. But if you really want to figure out what's in an image, there's loads of APIs that allow you to do that. This is the Computer Vision API from uh, Azure. There's loads of other ones out there as well. My colleague Sarah Drasner created another demo, which is on AIJS Rocks, which is the alt dynamically generated alt text. So she asked the question, well, could you use this API to create the alt text for images for accessibility purposes? Right? Automatically generate the alt text. And this is the, it's another code pen that you can go to and play around with. Um, and this is, this is one of the images that she's put into it. And I think just wanted to highlight what this says. So this is, this is the top is the caption that the, the API returns. So, a black and white photo of Thomas Edison. The text says, hey, girl, did we just share electrons because I'm feeling a covalent bond between us? I don't even understand what that means. But the important thing I want to show here is that it didn't just say a black and white photo of a guy. It knew this was Thomas Edison. OK? And it also knew, it knew it should extract the text from the image. So the, these kind of APIs do, do a this API does a lot of kind of pretty complex things behind the scenes. But even it gets it wrong sometimes. 
as a couple of people posted out kindly, or kindly pointed out on Twitter. So uh, this, this person pointed out that this image says, a star-filled sky, the text says, four, something. The next one I think is actually, could actually be true. I mean, you don't, you don't know, do you? I mean, it could be stuffed animals, right? Um, the next one I love because we were kind of like 50-50, right? <laughs> half, half, right? I'll take it. I'll take that in the win column. Um, so I think just to summarize, and I think if there's one takeaway you should take from this entire talk, and I think it's a really important one, is TensorFlow.js doesn't have any dependencies, okay? You can drop a script tag in. Sorry, you can import a job. Let's just be honest. Drop a script tag in and just start running, right? Um, and if you want to start analyzing images, MobileNet is just a really simple way to analyze images. I use it to kind of help people get introduced to the whole process because it's quite impressive with a very short amount of time. But if you really want to analyze images properly, you need to use an API because these, these models are really, really large um, to do it properly. And it does the Azure Computer Vision API, which you can use. I think it's time for another drink. I'm going to check my phone. We're good. So the next one is my favorite one. I love this demo. If you go on AIJS Rocks, you'll find it, and you can play around with it. And I encourage you to go play around with it. It's a very, very powerful demo. It's made by a guy called Ziad, who's um, he's, he's a student in, uh, he's a Yemeni student in Saudi. A student, he's a student, right? He's still at university, and he's building these amazing things. So um, I'm just gonna show it you. So it's, it's basically an app that draws pictures of cats when you draw the outline. Pretty cool, right? How does it work? Magic. Magic, that's right. It uses something called a generative, called a generative adversarial neural network. And I think these are really, really exciting. Uh, uh, techniques, right? So what, a gener what is a generative adversarial neural network? Well, you have, basically, you have two neural networks that are competing with each other. Adversarial, okay? You have one neural network called a generator. You have another one called a discriminator. Now, the generator's job is for a given outline to generate an image of a cat, a realistic image of a cat, okay? Such as that. Um, but initially, obviously, the generator is going to be, I remember I told you that the weights are going to be randomized. It's not going to do a really good job of generating cat images. It's going to do a really bad job of generating cat, cat images. In fact, the very, very first cat image it's going to generate is probably just going to be static. Okay? But then what it does, you generate all those cat images, and you basically pass them into the discriminator, in which you also pass real images of cats. And the discriminator's job is to then go, okay, this is a real cat image, and this is not a real cat image. But the discriminator itself is not going to be very good at its job because all of its weights are randomly generated. Okay? So at the start, the discriminator, discriminator might go, okay, actually, the static is a real cat, and the real cat is not a real cat. And in which case, it would then do that thing which is called training, backpropagation. So if the, if, if the discriminator got it wrong, it would then backpropagate and tune those weights. The next time you ask it the question, it will do a slightly better job. If the discriminator goes right, then the, then the generator is not doing a very good job. So the generator gets backpropagated so that the, the, the numbers are tuned so next time it produces a better cat image. And you keep on doing that and doing that and doing that, and the generator gets better and better and better at generating cat images. The discriminator gets better, better and better at discriminating between real cats and fake cats. Okay, until eventually, the discriminator just can't tell anymore. The generator is so so good at generating cat images, the discriminator can't tell in the slightest. And so then, what you do is you take the generator model, and 
And that's what you might export and use inside TensorFlow. And when you saw the demo earlier on, that's what he did. He took the generator model, exported it, and so loaded it inside TensorFlow.js and built that application around it. So basically, then what you can do is you can give it a new sketch, and it'll generate a cat image. That's what it's doing. OK? But cat images are, are funny. You know, it's like an interesting idea. But what's the point of something like this? Yeah? What's the, what's the reason behind it? What are some other applications of this? Well, how about this? The algorithm before was called picks to picks. This is called vid to vid. This isn't running in JavaScript, by the way. This is vid to vid. This isn't running in JavaScript yet, I should say. You always have to say yet when we talk about JavaScript, right? This isn't running in JavaScript yet. This is a vid to vid algorithm. These are the inputs. These are the outputs. OK? Inputs, outputs. What about this one? One input, multiple outputs. Slightly different. And these are the inputs. The inputs here are taking like kind of outlines of images. But you can actually train these kind of GANs up to take any kind of input, really. It doesn't just have to be an outline of an image. There's this one where it's giving kind of a uh, segmentation model. So it's not just an outline, but it kind of gives some sort of knowledge of depth. Again, she's not dancing. This is generated by this. You could, whatever you provide here, it's going to generate an image of her dancing in the same method, same uh, copy. Oh, they want to get silence. Everybody's scared. How about this one? Again, another example. This is, again, a segmented street image at the top. These are different algorithms here. That's the picks to picks. That's the same one used in the, in the cat demo, so it's not so good. The, the cat demo was using an algorithm which is better for static images. But this is vid to vid, so it's better for video streams. And this is generated. Um, it's pretty close. In fact, if you look really closely, you can see some artifacts. There's kind of a blob without legs coming out of that car and other different things. But it's pretty close. It's pretty close. And in fact, you don't even have to use, so I showed you how you can use outlines. And I showed you how to use segmented images. But you don't even have to have that. You can have text as an input. Have text as an input. So this is another one, StatGAN. And the text at the top is the input. The images are the output. This is after, I think, 600 iterations is after 1,200 iterations. All of these are pretty good, right? That one might be a little bit iffy, but the rest of them, pretty good. And in fact, you can actually run this online. Oop, that's not it. It's a, a drawing bot. So uh, shout out, what kind of bird? Bird with a crazy bird, crazy Eyes, what color beak? White. White beak. Am I spelling it right? Yeah. Shout out, what color feathers? Hot Sorry? Hot, Hot co <laughs> Give me primary colors, please. Orange. Orange. Oh. R. Orange. Feathers. I don't know, should we leave it at that? And a what? And a crown. <sighs> we'll see, man. I don't know about that. OK, we'll give it a go. Um, hopefully, there, there you go. Generated. Oh, it has crazy eyes. Check it out. That's insane. <laughs> That's actually a bad example, I have to say. I think it has the word crazy in it, so it went a little bit nuts. But there you go. Look. Um, it generated, I'm going to go with this one. It generated a picture of a bird with crazy eyes, uh, white beak, and orange-ish mm, feathers. Right? That's generated live using a, a GAN. 
Interesting that, right? What if you could create a GAN where you can type in the type of website that you want, and it just creates it for you? What if you could create a GAN where you could type in a form, a type of form that you want, and it's going to create the form for you? Interesting that, right? Wouldn't it be good if one of those existed? Oh, oh, it looks like there is one. Shout it out. A form with three fields. One field is a, ooh. One field is a, color picker. The other is a, text area, and the last is a slider. You ready? Okay. Doesn't exist. Yes. Yet. Okay. But I had you going for a second, okay? And I think I had you going because you can see in your head after everything I've showed you, you can see in your head, we're probably not that far away, are we? If we can generate an image of a bird, I think we can generate a form or a website or a component, just some text. I don't think we're that far away. Go back onto the thing. And that's it, just a summarize all of that. Um, so GANs are just like, a, a, you can, GANs learn to generate new images. Yeah, they're generative. Right? Other types of neural networks have a discriminatory, this is generative, it can generate things that have never existed before. Um, but they actually take a lot of compute to train, far more than a neural, normal neural network. Um, but eventually when you create, train it up, you can actually export that model into a format which TensorFlow.js can load, and you can run that in the browser. So that's it. So what, one of the things, takeaways, if you, a takeaway you can have for today, if you want to learn a little bit more about how to use AI and, uh, with JavaScript in the browser, I've released the Mojifier as a tutorial on Acker.ms Mojifier, and you can go and figure out how to build your own AI-powered JavaScript uh, Slack bot um, and you could do all kinds of things, you know, maybe add a deal with it, sunglasses, whatever, right? Um, and just a few final, final thoughts on the subject of JavaScript and AI, because I think it's a very, very new field, right? And I think one of the questions I've been trying to answer for the last year is where, where does JavaScript fit into this landscape? Okay, when we've been hearing about AI, machine learning, and data science, and all these different tools and technologies, we just heard the word Python, and we, we, just, we don't, we're not used to hearing the word JavaScript linked to that technologies, but that's changing now, okay? It's changing now with TensorFlow.js and a couple of other frameworks out there. And I see a future where there's a specialist JavaScript machine learning role, a new one, okay? Where you maybe you don't need to understand and read kind of papers, uh, data science papers like day in, day out, but you need to know the basics so you can, in order to be able to take a model and productionize it. One of the things that I found surprising, that we found surprising in the meetup that we started in London, was we thought the only people who turn up would be JavaScript developers, but it's not. We actually found a mixture of people from data science, machine learning, coming into our meetup because they wanted to learn JavaScript, okay? Because when all you've got is kind of a Python script running in a folder, there's nothing you can do with that. You need to use JavaScript in order to productionize, in order to build beautiful applications to share the work that you've built. And that's where I see us as JavaScript developers fitting into this space in the future. Thank you very much for your time.